frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Don't you understand, George? It's because you were not born. Film church. Well, a, a boy's best friend is his mother. I very often stay at the office and work for an extra hour or two, especially when the weather is bad. It's not that I'm overly ambitious. It's just a way of killing time until it's all right for me to go home. You see, I have this little problem with my apartment. I live in the West 60s, just half a block from Central Park. My rent is $85 a month. It used to be 80 until last July when Mrs. Lieberman, the landlady, put in a second-hand air conditioning unit. It's a real nice apartment. Nothing fancy. Kind of cozy. Just right for a bachelor. The only problem is... I can't always get in when I want to. Hello, buddy boy, and welcome to Film Church Radio, the podcast that treats cinema as a religion. It's Sunday, I'm Lewis. And I'm Brandon. And we are here to talk about movies. Each week, Brandon and I alternate picking a film for us both to watch and discuss. Today, I picked the 1960s film The Apartment, starring Jack Lemmon, Shirley MacLaine, and Fred McMurray, directed by Billy Wilder. Um, as I mentioned last week, Wilder is a director I admire, um, and he's included in my pantheon of cinema greats. Um, qu- quite a lot of what he touched turned to gold, in my opinion, and this is one example of that. Um, the Apartment is similar to sort of like a greatest hits compilation for Wilder, full of characters, actors, situations, and lines that all allude to his back catalogue of masterpieces. Um, it was originally chosen because last week... Um, me and Brandon watched Bernie, um, which starred Shirley MacLaine. Um, and I can hardly utter a name without popping the apartment in the Blu-ray player and pressing play. Um, the best thing about this is I've got someone to talk about it with after it's finished, um, as Brandon had never seen it. Um, and as always, I'm super excited to hear what Brandon thinks, and we're going to get to that shortly. Um, like I said, I did choose this week's film. Um, if you want to know what we're going to watch uh, next week stick around till the end of the show brandon's gonna surprise us all with his pick um for us to watch before we come back next week um a little tithing for us to go out into the world with until the next show um we do want to thank everyone who's been listening to the podcast and sending their love for the show we recently hit a milestone um that was super incredible for us both um, so if you're new to the show and are enjoying it, um, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when a new episode is available. Um, this is a film church, so we post episodes on Sundays. Um, so come and join us, relax on a Sunday and listen to us talk about your favorite movies. Um, if you really, really enjoy the show, just share it with your friends um, and share it with the people that are out there um, looking for these kind of podcasts to listen to. Um, the bigger the congregation gets, um, the better better it's going to be because we want more people to come and join the film church um you can find us all on social media platforms at film church radio and where you can leave us a comment or send a message about the show Um, we do post extra content on youtube as well and other social media so make sure to check that out and just as a last thing we'd love for you to rate and review the show on whatever podcast service you're streaming from um it kind of ties into what i was saying earlier it just helps people find the show give us a listen and join the congregation which is what this is all about um before we talk about the main film the apartment and what we me and brandon like to do is talk about the other films we've been watching this week um because as uh, people that listen to this show will definitely know watching one film a week just does not do it it does not satisfy so we need to watch (laughs) continuously throughout the week and uh, so, Brandon, what have you been watching this week? I have been watching a few good films. Uh, cool. But first of all, cheers to 1,000 streams. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> we'll uh, raise a glass. Yeah, man. It's kind of crazy. This is also episode 30. Yeah. Um, Millie, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. It's insane. I, it, uh, not to get too off topic, but it popped up when we did our very first conversation a few weeks ago um it's like a year since we had done it uh, yeah since we did our um pink flamingos or, yeah like our yeah, yeah. trial episode yeah. which has not seen the light of day yet 
Oh, but, the trial one, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll probably put that on a Patreon for people at some point that we, th- we yeah. did. No one's seen it. Um, yeah, but uh, as always, it's me and Brandon trying to do too much. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Here's to 130 million more. That's it. <laughs> um, so after we watched Bernie last week, which is you know one of my all time favorite films, love Richard Linklater. Um, he's got a new film out on Netflix called Apollo Ten and a Half, a space age childhood. It just came out this year, 2022. I mean, it came out like a few months ago. Yeah. Um, and uh, I decided to put it on. It was very, uh, you know, not sure what to expect. But you know, I mean, all of his movies are just feel so different. Yeah. Um, but it was. Like first of all, the movie's amazing. It's a great, great movie. But it 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 was kind of perfect for me to watch because I just moved to Houston, mm. and it's about Houston in the nineteen sixties and the uh, um the space exploration craze when everybody when NASA was trying to get to the moon. Um, so it's like about growing up in Houston. It's about this kid, and uh, won't give too much away. But it's it's a really great film and shines a light on uh just kind of what childhood was like back then you know yeah. i mean it, it kind of gave me a perspective of i mean my my parents didn't grow up in houston but they grew up in the south you know and it, yeah. it kind of uh i don't know it just it's it's an it's kind of like this perfect little sliver of of life that doesn't exist anymore you know, I'm mm-hmm. sure for people who who did grow up back then, it would mean a lot more. I mean, I de- I'm definitely going to suggest this to my parents and see what they think. And my um, my brother in law who did grow up in Houston and his mom did too. I'm really curious what they they think about it once they watch it. Um, but yeah, it was it was really good, really really good. And Jack Black does the narration. Awesome. Which is dope. Yeah, like as soon as it started, I was like, oh my god, there he is. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to find time to watch it this week, yeah. um, but I just couldn't. So yeah. it's definitely on the to-watch list. And hopefully this time next week you'll hear me echoing yeah. what Brandon says. But <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I watched The Card Counter, um, yeah. which I was very disappointed with. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, I need to talk to Zach about it because he, he watched it say. and did really like it. Um, I yeah. know he talked about it on one of the episodes. I can't remember which. Maybe it was the, um, the double, the body, double body episode. Double. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I need I need to talk to him about it because I I just it felt very, um, boring. I guess is yeah the best way to put it without spoiling anything. Okay. Um, <laughs> just did not. It it just got to a point, that, you know, like an hour and a half into the movie, it was like, so when is this, like what's going on? Like what when yeah. is this gonna do? Anything gonna happen? And um, it was like there's only thirty minutes left. Might as well finish yeah. it. And, yeah. And then just was like, all right, well, I've seen it. <laughs> um. <laughs> so yeah. Uh. Anyway, so I watched that the card counter. Which is directed by, um, oh my gosh, what's his name? Paul Schrader. Yeah, Paul Schrader. Um, you know who who usually does really good work, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think it just it left either, you a bit cold. Yeah, yeah. I think um, that's I think that's the sentiment of like the the audience at large as well. Um, I don't think it's it set the world alight. You know yeah. when it came out. I know lots of people were excited for it, but. Yeah, and unfortunately, didn't quite light the spark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it felt a little bit like it was, um, way behind the times. Yeah. So, mm. you know, which it's a shame. Yeah. yeah. And and I don't know if that's just this is why I would like to talk to Zach about it, <laughs> but I don't know if that's just because it's like, um because we live in the TikTok generation where it's like instant and it, like we constantly need that instant mm. uh s- stimulation like we get like 
We've got so many, yeah. all them big movies or action movies. There's always something crazy going on or whatever. Or I think it, there's, I, yeah, I think there's a lot about slow burns that really work. I mean, um, portrait on a late portrait of a lady on fire was like that. Yeah. You know, a really slow burn and worked really well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that if the elements are there for that slow burn to work, then it works, you know, but yeah. if it just seems baggy and boring, it's, it's not, yeah, and not working and doesn't yeah. have like a good satisfying ending. I mean, there, there yeah. could have also been, you know, deeper layers to it that I just wasn't seeing, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and then I watched hustle on Netflix with, uh, Adam Sandler, which I see that you have watched as well. Yes. Um, I purposefully, when I saw the notes, I did not go and check Letterbox to see what you'd rated it. Okay. I am very interested to know what you thought. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Yeah. Um, I th- I think I gave it like a four out of five. Me too. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was really good. I mean, it for any basketball fans, like I'm sure that they would love it even more. Yeah. You know, I'm not a big sports person, but I mean, there was tons of basketball cameos um yeah. you know the real players in it and it felt like very much like a passion project for adam sandler who is a very outspoken ba- basketball fan yeah um um like even the I, th- I think when he did uncut gems which he's also like betting on basketball games the whole time right yeah he's uh like when he got to know the safety brothers they like played a game of basketball together you yeah. know, that's like how they broke the ice. Yeah. Um, but it was, yeah, it's a really great film. It's a very, yeah. um, is it family friendly? Not really, I guess, but there's it, some elements in there, I guess that aren't. Yeah. But, but maybe it, some elements in Rocky that aren't. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, yeah. It does feel like that kind of like a, a little bit more mature, but family. Yeah. You know, sports suitable. movie yeah. um kind of like maybe not you know young young kids but more like teenagers yeah you could watch this with teenagers and i think everyone would enjoy it in a different way yeah yeah definitely you know? yeah um, um yeah i'm glad you've seen it because we were looking for something to watch last night and we decided to put it on because um just i'm astounded by adam sandler's career of late I, yeah. he was someone that was always the butt of my joke you know if it was like what film will lewis never watch it's an adam sandler film yeah little nicky um just <laughs> none of them did it for yeah i just didn't find the comedy funny at all yeah um and i've got record many times um but yeah this i mean this late career i mean this kind of blend between comedy and drama is just it just suits him i think it's brilliant yeah yeah. Um he's really magnetic in this. I think that he carries, you know, the emotional weight of the film really well and he acts I mean he's really great in it. Yeah. Um and I like the fact that as a sports film it kind of it was formulaic, but I don't think that was a bad thing. I think yeah. like you knew what was kind of you knew kind of what was going to happen in the end mm-hmm. to a certain degree, but the story was different enough to keep your interest instead of, you know, now I'm telling you he can play basketball and nobody believes him. Yeah, It's like everybody knows, but it's just a different environment. Yeah. And I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 I'm excited Uh, to see, I mean, hopefully he carries this on and, you know, I know that he's doing murder mystery two with Jennifer Aniston, which I didn't really enjoy the first one too much, but maybe, Maybe this new lease of life is going to change my mind. Maybe yeah. he is the genius that everyone touts him as. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he definitely, I mean, I, I, it would be great to see him win an Oscar or something, you know. Yeah, um, I mean, I know that him and the Safdie brothers are teaming up again. Oh, great. That's awesome. I am yeah. so stoked for whatever that's going to be. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be good. Yeah. Um. They've, they've you know their last two movies were both really edgy and interesting and and unique you know yeah um they've definitely got like a unique voice and i don't know if it's the the first feature film 
it, it might just be the one before Good Time, I can't remember, but um, Daddy Long Legs is getting a Criterion release later this year. Okay. So that's exciting, because yeah. that's a film I haven't seen, and hopefully Good Time will be joining it as well in the near future. Sweet. Um, which I love Good Time. I think it's great. But, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the Sandman, he's the guy. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> The actor of our generation. Potent- I mean, it's coming. <laughs> like, if he carries on, Punch Drunk Love is another one that he's really good in. Yeah, I've never seen that, but I, I need to see it. It is, it is kind of crazy that, um, you know, these actors that feel, to me, feel like they should be so old by now. Yeah, have the like, have are having this resurgence in their careers and, um are better than ever yeah you know what i mean yeah um but you know in reality they're not that much older than me which is also scary <laughs> <laughs> i know it's that's the trouble especially being like a, a football soccer fan is that the players that your team sign now are like 10 years younger than i am yeah and it's just like, oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> and you're still looking up to them, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's very weird. They've had these. They're having the the moment of their life, and you're still waiting for yours, or you know, <laughs> you in general. Yeah. Oh dear. Not to get too philosophical and <laughs> depressing. Our moment is now, Lewis. This is Film Church Radio. <laughs> One thousand streams. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so what else did you watch this week? Um, so we finally managed to watch um, Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore, the third, can you believe it, in the uh, Fantastic, Fantastic Beasts. It is hard to believe, yeah. World, yeah. Um, the third actor that has played the villain um, <laughs> for different reasons. And, I mean, it's... Okay, it's the it's the best of the three. Okay. Um, and the reason for that is because the character that they've been trying to shove down our throats of Newt Scamander is kind of second in this yeah. a little bit. You know, he still he still does things, um, but it's more I th- you know, the other characters around him are more interesting. Yeah. And I think they kind of realise this now. Yeah. Um they should have just made it about Dumbledore. I mean, yeah, you know, I don't think Newt is such a boring character. Yeah, to base this around, and the people around him are so much more interesting than he is, um, which is a shame. Um, it's not, you know, golden cinema. It's not the best thing I've ever seen, but it was enjoyable. Um, special effects were good, as you would expect. Yeah, you know. Um, Kind of, I always come out a little bit disappointed because it always seems to kind of do the thing I want it to do, but not as well as I want it to do. Yeah. You know, it it expands this world out of Hogwarts, but it's just never as good as you want it to be. Yeah. Or as interesting. Yeah. You know, which is a real shame. Um, But it was streaming on HBO and it was free. So um, if you are, you know, if you've seen the other two, give it a watch because it's better than the other two. Sweet. Yeah. Um, Admittedly, I couldn't remember for the life of me what happened in the other two. Yeah. Um, But that's okay. And plus Ezra Miller's in it, which is probably going to be a thing of the past pretty soon. uh, He's in Dumbledore? Fantastic. Yes. So, see him him in in films before you never will again. Yeah. Um, Somebody told me recently that that he, like, kidnapped this girl and they can't find him. Yeah, that's right still going now. on. He deleted his Instagram the other day and he was posting cryptic messages like, you can't find me and stuff like that. Uh, um, yeah, really weird. Huh. Anyway. All right. <laughs> In other news. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then we are preparing for the, um, really, well, it's out, of Jurassic World Dominion, Yeah. which I always want to call Domination. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I've called it Domination a few times. Um we watched the Jurassic World from 2015. Um, Yay. So rewatched it. This was, I think, the third, fourth time. Okay. Um, my letterbox stats had told me that I'd seen it. 
and it went down half a star each time without wow. even realizing it. Yeah. So I was, <laughs> I mean, I was really hyped on it when I first saw it. I thought it was brill, really exciting, really fun. Um, so what was it the first time you saw it, the rating? It was four and a half. And now it's like what? Three. Three. Wow. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's still like, there's still really entertaining things in there. Um, you know, but I don't, I don't know. It's just, I, it's, it, 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 it definitely, I think I've only watched it one time, but, and it yeah. definitely, from what I can remember, feels like it's an event movie. You know, yeah. you go to the movie theater, you see it in IMAX, but then, you know, that's yeah. it. And I just, and I think I just tried to like really kind of get on board, but I just, I still am stuck in, you can't train raptors. Uh-huh. Like I'm just, I'm like, I'm just in the camp of they are, t- they are wild animals, and not even wild animals. Genetically modified. Yeah, yeah. Though. There's no, I mean, there's no, there's no <laughs> way that Chris Pratt can hold out his hand and they'd be like, okay, I want to stop. It's, it's just, Pratt. Uh, yeah, Pratt by name, Pratt by nature. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, some of it is, you know, is really entertaining and the world building is really cool. Um, but the the dialogue's really yeah. sticky and the I don't know, you know, there's a lot of things that don't really make sense. You know, when you rent when you first see it, you probably don't notice it, but there's a point where um like the Indominus Rex, the one they had made, had like clawed at the side of the cage and it yeah. cut to Chris Pratt and he touched it. And I was like, what possible reason would he need to touch it? Yeah, like that makes zero sense because you can tell what it is. What What do you think it's going to be? Like the dinosaur? I don't know. So, yeah, we watched that again. Not too excited for the new one, honestly. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I really like the original characters, so hopefully something interesting happens with them. I don't know. I've heard. I haven't seen the yeah. D- Dominion yet either, but I've heard. Well, not really heard, but. I saw a rating that someone rated it very low, someone mm-hmm. that I know, and then someone else that I know also said it was really good. So, mm. yeah, I'm he- I'm hearing pretty tepid things. You know, it's fine. Yeah. I think is what the general consensus probably is. fits with the rest of you know with the other two movies that they made. But yeah, yeah, and that's fine. You know, and this is the I always. I used to get really annoyed and be like, stop ruining things I love. And then I'm like, well, I've still got Jurassic Park. Yeah, exactly. I don't it's have like, to watch these again. Yeah, that's the thing, dude. It's like, I mean, yeah. it's so much of everything now is just franchise, franchise, franchise. Like how much money can they get out of this yeah. IP? I mean, yeah. they're making a prequel to Hunger Games now. Like, Yeah, I know. It's just I mean, everything just that's made keep, money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to keep going with yeah. everything. Until it, until no one shows up at the theater. Yeah. But, um, you know, I don't know if that's good or bad. I mean, I guess if, if, you know, they use the money on these franchise movies, you know, if that, that's their bread and butter and then they use the money to make smaller independent films, great. Yeah. But yeah. if they don't, then that's not great. I know. Yeah. But uh, franchise film, I think you know. Hopefully, franchises only last for so long. But yeah, they'll plug them until they, you know. Can you remember when it used to just be like the horror films that would go past the expiration date? It used to be like just the Freddy films and Friday the Thirteenth yeah. that would be like, oh, there's nine of them. And yeah. now it's like there's six Jurassic Park movies. You know, it's just it's it's insane to me. Yeah, my so. girlfriend was like, you know, oh, we need to watch rewatch the Jurassic Park movies before we go yeah. see, you know, the new one. And I was like, all right. And um, I was like, there's five of them. And she was like, what? I thought there was like two or three. Yeah. It's like, yeah. no, there's there's yeah. five. This is number six. <laughs> Yeah, Chelsea refuses to watch the the last, the one before this one, which I can't remember the name of. Yeah, um, just you know, because of the shot of the long neck on the island as it's getting blown up. Mm, yeah. So, 
Yeah. CGI. We'll see what the new one holds. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It's not um, real. But other than the pretty mediocre week apart from Hustle, we have both watched The Apartment from 1960. Yes. That is correct. <clears throat> um, directed by Billy Wilder, as we said, starring Jack Lemmon, Shirley MacLaine, and Fred McMurray. Um, the IMDb summary is a Manhattan insurance clerk tries to um, rise in the company by letting its executives use his apartment for trysts, but complications and a romance of his own ensue. Um, yeah, I mean, Billy Wilder is very good. Yes. At a lot of things. So not only did he direct it, but he co-wrote it um, with his um, frequent... This I think this is the second, second collaboration with IAL Diamond, um, affectionately known as Izzy. Um, so they wrote together and... Um, and Billy Wilder wrote a lot of his own scripts. Yeah. Um, if not all of them. So... You know, he had full control over the the story and kind of where it was going and stuff like that. Um, but what, so this was your first time seeing it? Yeah. Uh, first time seeing it and I loved it. Like it was, it was really great. I watched it twice. Um, yeah. The first time I watched it with my girlfriend and then I rewatched it again today just to prep for the episode. But, um, yeah, it was really good, man. Like it, it feels like a very, weird time in film history for this film to exist yeah. 1960 feels feels in a lot of ways the movie the way it's i mean it's black and white yeah the way it's shot the way it's acted uh feels very 40s or 50s like it feels mm -hmm. older than it is in a lot of ways mm -hmm. but then the subject matter and the script feels way ahead of its time. Yeah. So it feels like a very interesting place for it to be. Yeah. Um, a lot of stuff about the film surprised me, just yeah. the subject matter wise. <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. And I think, I think that's the thing. I think you know, it's it's one of the films that I think Wilder was always like this. He always pushed those boundaries and kind of you know really push what he could show on screen. Um, but this is the first one that is, you know, explicitly said within the first yeah. 10 minutes. You know, the the guy that he lends the key to at the beginning is coming out of the apartment and he's like, you know, so he says something about his wife. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah. it's, it's blatantly obvious what that apartment is being used Yeah, for. exactly. And it's interesting how they kind of dance around the the subject of sex and cheating on your wife. Yeah. I mean they they sort of do. I mean it's it's like you said it's blatantly obvious. But they're not uh they really don't say the word sex. I mean they say yeah. they they say it once. They say sex pot. Yeah. Yeah. Um <laughs> uh, later in the film. But yeah, I was really curious like the first question I had was like how did they pull this off? Like how were they able to make this movie because the Hayes Code was still around, right? Yeah. So the Hayes Code was still around. Um, it was on its last legs at this point. Uh -huh. You know, we were starting to get the um, influx of European cinema that did not have the Hayes Code and was pushing boundaries yeah. a little bit. Um, and it started to get a little bit lax. You know, they were letting things slip through. Um, and the original idea for Wilder came from, have you ever seen um, David Lean's Brief Encounter? No. From the 40s. Okay, so it basically, um, that's a film set in England and it's these two people that meet by chance. Both of them are married and they start up an affair. Um, and it's not, it's never consummated. Um, but they just kind of, it's like an emotional affair. Yeah. Um, and there's one point in the film where the male character says, I have a friend who can lend us his apartment um, for the night, uh, you know. Yeah. Um, and Billy Wilder thought at that point, he was like, you know, which all great screenwriter, screenwriters do, I want to know his story. You know, what drives mm -hmm. a man to lend out his key and crawl into the warm sheets after, yeah. you know, he's let them go and have an affair in his apartment. Yeah. 
And this is where this film came from. Um, obviously, in the 40s, there was no way this film was going to get even close to being made. Yeah. Um, and he started it up again in the 50s. And then um, a, um actress um, was having an affair with, I think it's her, her publicity, her pub a publicist or an or an agent and they would go to an apartment um joan bennett um i was fishing for the name and they would go to an apartment and kind of have an affair um and then her husband found out and shot him in the leg ah. and that was like huge news so again the film was like pulled he was like okay it might be a bit too fresh to you know put this out there um and then i don't know just kismet it just happens you know yeah and around the time he'd just done some like it hot which had broken boundaries because it had males dressing up as females and yeah um a lot of that was like 58 or something yeah a lot of 59 i think double entendres and you know uh -huh. you know cross dressing and yeah hints of homosexuality and all that kind of stuff you know he kind of got away with it so this was the next step this was the more explicit you know? Yeah, so that probably just kind of like once that was successful, which some like it hot is considered like the One greatest the comedy film comedy. of all time, yeah. at least. You know, yeah. I mean, it's in like the top films of all time, but as far as comedy mm -hmm. films, it's like number one, yeah, or two or three, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so maybe because I was just thinking, like, you know, he must have had a lot of courage to do this film. N you know, not only him, but then also the producers and the financers to be like, yeah, let's do it. But I mean, I'm, yeah. it must have been because of the success of Some Like It Hot. Yeah, I mean, he was coming off the back of, um, I, I forget this, let me just look it up because it's a pretty incredible, like boom, 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 you know. Yeah. Um, let me have a look. I should really know this off the top of my head. How dare you? <laughs> okay, so before, I mean, he'd done um, The Seven Year Rich with Marilyn, with Marilyn um, Spirit of St. Louis with Jimmy Stewart, which was a big hit, I believe. Love in the Afternoon with Audrey Hepburn and um, Gary Cooper, two very bankable names. Yeah. Witness for the Prosecution, which is one of my favorite Wilder films. Um, it's like a courtroom drama um, with, Marla, with Marlena Dietrich. It's wonderful. Sweet. Then some like it hot, and then the apartment. So he okay. was like knocking it out of the park. Yeah. And, the, and that was all within five years. Yeah. Um, so he was just not, I mean, like gold at this point. Yeah. Um, Proving himself. Yeah. Um, close to Hitchcock level. Yeah. In terms of like, I know, bankable directors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but unlike Hitchcock, I feel like Wilder does push it a little bit further. You know, oh, definitely. Is... Yeah. I mean, I, de I don't, I don't think, um, yeah, Hitchcock was very good at putting in hints, like mm -hmm. clues of what they were talking about. Um, but still children could watch it, you know, like yeah. it would be about sex, but it was not about sex. It was about something yeah. else, you know? Yeah. Uh, to, like I said, to the point where a child could watch it and, or even a, like a family could watch it and have no idea that it was actually, yeah. the subtext was something sexual. Yeah. Whereas this, like you could not let your kid watch no. this without no. explaining <laughs> what sex was or yeah. what was going on. Or, I mean, the affairs are obvious and yeah. Um, like these are all married men yeah and, um <laughs> yeah so it is th this film did win best picture mm -hmm. uh which is great and what it what's what i was reading that was really interesting was this was the last black and white film to win best picture until schindler's list in 1993 and then the artist in 2011 Mm -hmm. Which, you know, okay, maybe those films are black and white, but this this film was kind of the last true, yeah, you know, when films were still being made in black and white regularly, the yeah. last true black and white film to win Best Picture. Yeah. Uh, which I think says a lot for 
um, just what they were doing, you know, just yeah. like the, the film, you know, I said at the beginning that it feels older than it is. I think that was on purpose. Like, I think mm-hmm. they were trying to make that type of film that you would see in the forties and fifties, but do something that's more current, that's more yeah. in your face, that's more progressive. Um, and it just, it, it brings out this interesting, like just such an interesting flavor. I feel yeah. like, you know, agreed. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, I think from the beginning, the, I don't know, the, the, the way that the, the camera moves with the characters as well. And the fact that, like you said, it is in mon- it is in black and white, um, just adds to that like story. Yeah. You know, um, it must have been, it must have been for a reason because the same, you know, with Hitchcock in the same year doing Psycho. Yeah. You know, black and white was for a reason. Yeah. Um, I feel like this is probably for a reason as well. Um, yeah. And I think that that's a good estimation that, you know, it's, it feels classic. It feels like a film from the forties that maybe he probably did want to make then. Yeah. But couldn't. And now is his chance. You know? Yeah. The cinematography kind of blew me away in this movie. Yeah. You know, one of the first shots is in the insurance company office. Yeah. Where you see these rows of desks and, they're perfectly symmetrical to the frame. Yeah. And then the lights on the ceiling are also perfectly symmetrical. Uh, and then the like pillars on the sides of the buildings, yeah. like it's all just in one shot. It just, it, it kind of blows my mind when I see things like that in older films. Cause the cameras were so big. I'm like, yeah. how did you guys like that? It's like a, engineering feat yeah to be able to to get it in frame that way especially because you're dealing with film which is like a moving mechanical jittery mm-hmm. thing <laughs> yeah um and then found out later that they achieve like the the room is actually a lot smaller than it looks and they achieve the depth by making smaller and smaller desks and having uh, different sized people come in mm-hmm. to the point where in the back it's like children dressed up as yeah. adults but you can't <laughs> tell because they're so far back so not only is it like incredible cinematography but incredible production design which I believe yeah. the production designer won an Academy Award Um, yeah it just it, it, it blows my mind and there's a lot of beautiful shots I mean that was mm-hmm. probably the, one of the most um crazy ones as far as uh design wise but then the rest of the movie is just beautiful like beautiful classic black and white hollywood to look at yeah um which is which is always one of the great things about watching you know older hollywood movies is is uh you know that it just has an aesthetic that Mm -hmm. you don't really see anymore but on top of that you've got a story that you do not see mm-hmm. in films this old. And then yeah. you've got great acting as well. Yeah. Um, no, I agree. I mean, I, you know, I love classic cinema, yeah. especially Hollywood cinema. And this is, you know, up there in terms of the very best for yeah. me, um, for all of the things you just said. So let's talk about the actors a little bit. I mean, let's start with Shirley MacLaine because, mm-hmm. you know, this is kind of what brought us to the apartment. Yeah. Um, CC Baxter slipped us the key and we're in there. Um, what did you make of her performance? Because she was pretty young at this point. I'm not sure exactly yeah. how old, um, but, you know. Well, first off, it was really weird to see her so young. Um, yeah. You know, we watched Bernie last week, which she's uh, much older. Mm-hmm. Um, and I completely forgot until today. I was having coffee with my girlfriend and she was – we were talking about this movie and she was like, what was that other movie y'all watched and y'all talked about on the podcast? And I was like, Bernie? And she's like, no, the other one uh, where she's like the crazy housewife. And 
and I was like, oh yeah, being there. I completely forgot oh, yeah. <laughs> that yeah, she was in that. And um, yeah, so in that one, she's like kind of middle-aged, you know, yeah. she's not super young, but she's not like, not as old as she's in, is in, in Bernie. Like Bernie was 2011, being there is, you know, mid eighties and this is 1960. So, um, but man, she is really, really something in this movie. She's, Mm -hmm. um, you know, she starts off and she's like very charming, you know, very pleasant, very like happy kind of a character. And then you get to see some depth later on, but she's also a very strong, like female presence. Like Mm -hmm. this guy slaps her ass getting out of the the elevator in one of her first scenes. And she like gets onto him, you know, she like stands up for herself. She's like, I'm going to chop your arm off. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, And um, yeah, especially in contrast to the rest of the women in the film, she definitely has this uh, very strong uh, presence, I yeah. guess. Yeah, I think it's with the especially with the women. It's definitely a um, like an old and new. You know, I mean, yeah, the pre-code stuff. There was a lot of women sleeping around to get to the top. You know, Barbara Stanwyck, who was with Billy Wilder and Double Indemnity, did a film called Babyface, which is all about her just basically sleeping her way to the top of a corporation. Um, But with this, I feel like Shirley MacLaine's character is stereotypical in a way that she falls in love with Sheldrake Uh and kind of, you know, is is lovelorn. Um, But also they add in um, depression, which is a very um, progressive topic. I feel like in this time. And then the other female characters that are in it are more like the pre-code women. They yeah. they know that they're married. They know that they shouldn't be doing it, but you know, it's just a, it's just fun. They're just, yeah. you know, it's, yeah, it's at first, how they get the kicks. Yeah. At first when I was watching this movie, every time a female came in, I was like, what is going on with these women? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like why are they <laughs> like this and I, I mean and then i realized okay i think they're just kind of doing this on purpose like they're making fun of the way that hollywood treats women i think mm-hmm. is what i kind of got by it because there's like the woman who's like you know the guy's on the phone with baxter trying to see if he can get the apartment to sleep with this lady and while he's like on the payphone she's at the bar and she comes up to him and she's like i'm lonely yeah marilyn monroe <laughs> yeah <laughs> when are you coming back yeah. and it's just like oh my god like come on like mm-hmm. this is not a real person <laughs> yeah it's ridiculous um, um, but yeah I, I think, think that was uh, that was in service of the ridiculousness of to make it feel kind of in that old time yeah you know oh for sure yeah, I think that the the Marilyn Monroe look alike is is pretty important. I always I always forget she's in it, especially seen as the last film was Some Like It Hot that yeah. Wilder did with Marilyn. Um and you know, I've heard things that you know, obviously on Some Like It Hot she was terrible to work with. She you know, mm. she was going through her real difficult period of fluffing lines and not being ready for hours and leaving the set and having affairs with leading men and yeah the whole shebang um but i i wonder you know i've heard rumors or theories that that's wilder being like i still want to work with her you know she's still uh, yeah the best person to work with um but for me i think it's just just a, an an easy you know impression of someone that's touted as beautiful you know it's like oh, i've got a girl that looks like marilyn monroe yeah you yeah. know i need the apartment right now yeah um and she does a really good Monroe impression. <laughs> yeah. It is it's pretty scary. Yeah. Um and apparently she was supposed to wear one of Marilyn's dresses from Some Like It Hot, but the actress thought it was too low cut and didn't want to wear it. Oh wow. So, Interesting. That's yeah. funny. But yeah, I mean, I love that. I love the little giggle he says after Marilyn Monroe as well. Yeah. The girl that looks like Marilyn Monroe. He's like, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, 
like back to Shirley MacLaine, like she, I don't know. And she has a very interesting arc in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and I might need to watch it a few more times to really get it. Cause at, cause at first she's just like, she's, it seems like she's over this guy, the Fred yeah. McMurray character, Sheldrick. Um, but Boo. then she like falls hard for him again, like real yeah. hard. Yeah. And, and then, yeah, there's like a suicide attempt, which is just shocking. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. the, like, I don't think I've ever seen suicide be a subject matter in, yeah. in a Hollywood film this old, you know? Yeah, and not just that, but the fact that we see the kind of repercussions of that. Mm-hmm. You know, as we said at the top, you know, Wilder was interested in seeing, you know, what kind of character would lend their bed out. It's the same with this. It's like what happens after that suicide attempt? Yeah. You know, we don't get a cut forward 24 hours and she's, you know, sitting up in bed playing cards. It's, you know, it's brutal. She gets like, yeah. slapped and forced fed coffee and is walking around the apartment, you know, being yeah. made to kind of, you Which know, is also and... one of the most shocking things when the doctor yeah. is just slapping her over and over and over. Yeah. It just goes on and on and on. It's like, jeez. Yeah. I, I mean. It's it's intense. Yeah. It, and it's it's a weird it, it's it's such an interesting way that that it's depicted because it's comical mm-hmm. you know it's suicide it's it's very dark but at the same time it's just played as a comedy yeah you know yeah um so it's it's like should i be laughing at this i know <laughs> like, yeah um it's really interesting but but i liked where it went like i liked the ending you know yeah and everything yeah me too i think that for this i don't class it as a comedy i know a lot of people do yeah i think the the comedic elements are there to keep you interested until the suicide attempt i think that's when it really kicks into yeah you know overdrive is the is that relationship that builds between them in the apartment. Yeah. Um, and the comment, I mean, the co- Jack Lemon, I think is, is hilarious. And, you know, he's just like you said, you know, his del- line delivery is just unlike anybody else. Yeah. Um, I don't just those little touches that like when he's in the office with Sheldrake and he's, um, and he sprays his nasal spray by accident. <laughs> um, it's, oh, you yeah, know, he's and, he's very much uh it's like that classical Hollywood thing. It's like the the Buster Keaton thing, you know, mm-hmm. it's like the stage performance thing. Yeah. Like he's his c- comedic timing is really good and his physical comedy is yeah. really good. I, I can just imagine that if you were playing opposite him, you would hate it because he would just upstage you, you know, he's getting the key out for Sheldrake and it's like handful after handful of tissues. Uh-huh. While the conversations happening. Um there's, you know, and I think Lemon is such an interesting actor because he's not, he's not like leading man matinee looks. You know, yeah. he's not the Cary Grant um, type at all. Yeah. And um, the only other person in my mind that's similar is kind of Jimmy Stewart. Is that every, mm-hmm. you know, not classically handsome, but magnetic. Yeah. Um, and Wilder loved him. You know, from really? some like yeah. it hot, he was just like, this is the guy. This is the guy I, I can, like that's yeah. going to be in my film, you know. I can definitely see that, yeah. Um, and he gets all the best lines, <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. He's such a weird performer. I feel like, yeah. like just very unique. Like I, I, I get what you're saying about him being an everyman kind of person, but he's 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 not. Uh, he's just so goofy. You yeah. know what I mean, in a weird, yeah. in a weird way, like in in yeah. a way that you don't, I don't like. I don't know who else I would co- compare him to because he he even seems to just like laugh at himself a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, like when he's doing the um, 
straining the spaghetti <laughs> and then he's like talking about watch how i do the meatballs like yeah <laughs> he's just like <laughs> laughing at himself you know what i mean but he like knows that it works yeah you know? it's it reminds me of dad jokes you know mm, i think yeah. that the script does a really good job of he's not blameless in this because he's still lets people use his apartment for illicit affairs but i think compared to the other men that we get to see on camera he is you know the script does a really good job at showing us that he is better than them yeah you know he's he's he obviously got into this for a reason and he eventually gets a backbone um and walks out which is which is you know a great scene yeah um but you know there's a lot in there you know he's the he's the one guy that takes his hat off in the elevator with a um which he says he kind of he's very polite about the way that he asks her out you know let's let's go and see something i thought we could have dinner as well um the only slight black cloud over this film which i think is just the the only way that it's aged is when he tells her that he knows where she lives and who she lives with. Yeah. And she kind of finds it a little bit romantic and a little bit like, oh, <laughs> you did your research kind of thing. And now it's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that whole scene is definitely very yeah. icky. And Which like, is a shame. Yeah, yeah, it does date it. And and I can you can see what they were kind of going for, is that, you know, someone that's taken an interest in her as a yeah. person as opposed to her body, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, I mean, it also is, um, there's a continuing joke in there too, where she's talking about, she's like, I wouldn't want you to, I wouldn't want people yeah. to get the wrong idea about how you found out. And then yeah. that, that joke comes back later too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it was just one of those things in the script that just didn't, age particularly well yeah. yeah but the rest of this mm. film i feel like ages super well yeah um a hundred percent i think the affairs feel real and of a time you know um the the characters are all fleshed out um sheldrake is the worst male <laughs> I have ever seen on camera. Every, yeah. every time I watch it, I just can't believe how diet, like, just awful he is as a person. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I kept writing down the second time I watched it. I was like, man, this guy is a piece yeah. of shit. Yeah. Because just when you think, you know, he's like, he, he said he's going to divorce his wife and then he never did. And then to get her back, he's like, oh, I've got the, I was on the phone to my divorce lawyer. It's going to happen. And that's despicable. And then you find out that he's been having an affair with his assistant and threw her to the side mm-hmm. and said the same thing to her and that he gives her $100 for Christmas like a prostitute. It's just, he is awful. And yeah. I think the funny thing is Fred McMurray, like, you know, he trusted Billy Wilder. Um, but there's, you know, stories of him walking down the street and women hitting him on the head with like umbrellas and stuff <laughs> because of this film because yeah. of how he treated Shirley MacLaine because <laughs> he was I think he was on TV at this time doing was it called My My Three Sons some sitcom yeah where he's like happily married and like the father of like three kids so it yeah. was very um it was a risk yeah yeah to take this but I mean he'd done He'd done it before. Double Indemnity is not a great character. He's not a great... Yeah. Well, he is a great character. He's not a great guy. Right. And it worked, yeah. so... Yeah. He he does... He he fits in this movie so well. He he feels like just that classic... Like yeah. his voice and his act, mm-hmm. like his acting style yeah. is, is such a... Yeah, just like a classical Hollywood type. Mm. Typical man. Yeah, but, and I think but he does, yeah, they do go really far with how awful he is. Yeah, he does a great job of playing like romantic, pathetic. When he's like, "Fran, don't leave me," like you know, please or whatever, and then like intimidating when he's telling back so that he can just knock him straight back down again if he doesn't give him the key. Yeah, he does it all really well. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it. I mean, those three are, are great in this film. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, 
the the doctor also got nominated mm-hmm. for best supporting actor jack crushin crushin oh yeah crushin maybe crushin it yeah <laughs> he crushed it yeah <laughs> yeah um, um which i'm not surprised i mean he was really good in the yeah. movie yeah <laughs> and never finds out that it's not baxter that's the yeah. lothario I know yeah. that was like that's just another one of those like uh perfect Hollywood screenplay things where it's yeah. like it, every time they are coming out of their apartment they never see uh <laughs> yeah. the, the other guy. men going yeah. in yeah I love um, it I think is it on Christmas Eve um but when he, he opens the door to get something he goes back and he's like Mildred he's at it again <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, great. Yeah, he was um, good. I really, really like the music in this as well. Mm-hmm. I think, um, you know, we get that reoccurring theme from the Tiki Bar, which is the best looking bar in cinema. I want to be in that bar. I think yeah. it looks great. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we get that reoccurring theme quite a lot. And even when Bax is on his own, it's kind of. It's slow. It's kind of, it, it reminded me of the kind of music that you would put on if you were like with, you know, someone. Mm, You're like, yeah. let me put on some smooth jazz or something. You know, <laughs> the stereotypical yeah. kind of music, um, which is made quite sad because it's just him on his own. Yeah. You know, and the one time he does take someone up to his apartment, there's a girl that's nearly dead in his bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the music didn't necessarily stand out to me. Um when I watched it, but that's probably because I was just paying attention to everything yeah. else. So I'm going to have yeah. to, to pay a little more attention to that the next time I watch it. But that's, uh, I mean, how many times have you seen this film? Um, according to Letterboxd, I think this is my fifth. Wow. Um, but I, I saw it. I mean, so when I, like I said last week, um, when I was at university, I wrote my dissertation on, Billy Wilder's representation of women, um, okay. and I, I can't I can't remember if I focused on the apartment or if I went. I think I went for Emma LaDuce, which is another film he did with Shirley MacLaine and Jack Lemmon. After this, oh, okay, because it's not as wildly widely talked about. Yeah, um, but I watched the apartment a lot around that time. Yeah, just to kind of you know keep going back to it, keep going back to it. Yeah, um, and that so was I've the first time you had seen it was in school. Um, I watched it, I think in my first year of school and I wasn't blown away by it. Yeah. I'd seen Dublin Indemnity and I'd seen Sunset Boulevard and I were like, these are incredible. And I think I was expecting, you know, another film noir kind of thing. Mm, And it's a bit different. Um, probably wasn't mature enough to get it on every level, you know? Um, but I, every time I watch it, I'm just, I'm like, this is great. It's one of those films that I could just, I could watch again now. Yeah, I could have it on the background. I could, you know, happily sit and be glued to it. It's just phenomenal. Yeah. And you, this was the first time you'd seen it. I mean, yeah. other Wilder films. What other ones had you seen before? Um, I've seen Double Indemnity, which I believe I watched um, in film school, and yeah. Some Like It Hot, which I watched mm-hmm. for my comedy film class. Yeah. Uh and I think that might be it as far as Billy Wilder goes. Yeah. But well, that's I mean, good to know because I'm sure he's going to pop up again in the future. Sweet. I mean, you're, you've seen a, a ton of his stuff, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, there's a few later films that I haven't, um, I haven't seen, maybe one or two. Um, and there's a few kind of just dotted about that I just haven't got to, but, um, I just it's something about the way his scripts just get me. It's the dialogue is always really interesting. Um there's just I don't I don't know how to describe it. He's just a really good writer of words. Yeah. If that yeah, makes there's sense. there's so many good lines in this movie. Yeah. I think my favorite line in this movie is uh when I mean, they say it twice, but it's it's when they're like, "That's the way it crumbles," you know, cookie wise. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but 
that you know it's such a it like just by itself is a great line but they like earn that mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. with all yeah. the different you know this wise and that wise and you know yeah. all the different wise lines that are in the movie um and the first time you watch it 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 it, it creeps up on it feels like it creeps up on you yeah you know by the time you get to that cookie wise line mm-hmm. it's like oh that was that was really great but i mean you notice that they're saying you know this wise and that wise a lot yeah but then the second time i watched it i was paying a little more attention and it's like right away it's mm-hmm. like those lines are just in there right off the bat yeah um and it's it's interesting cuz it just you know, first time you watch it, you don't notice because it just, you know, it's just a part of the dialogue mm-hmm. and the way people talk. But then they start to hone it in and, and use it in a hilarious way. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. I, I, there's just so many things I could say about the script, especially in the, you know, they, as Wilder and Diamond didn't want anybody to change their words. You know, I think there's a story from the girl he picks up at the bar. Um, where she's talking about her her boyfriend or her husband, and she says he and the script was like he's like a jockey, and she said he's kind of like a jockey or something like that. He's kind of yeah. like a a mouse or something like that. And they kept Paul and being like, no, like you you've got to say it exactly as it's on the page, because hmm. they were just so like glued to their ideals. Yeah, and, like, what they had written on the page was right. Which, I mean, it's, you yeah. know, I mean, in today's world, yeah, uh, yeah, in today's world, I would be like, you know, you're not as great as you think you are, dude, you yeah. know, but I mean, after seeing this movie, yeah. you know, I'm like, obviously there was a, a yeah, a method to their madness because mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. that lady, that New York girl at the bar <laughs> yeah. is like the most New York <laughs> girl yeah. that I have like seen. Yeah. That's uh, great. Yeah, she was she was really good. Um Yeah, that's interesting though. So where do you think the strength of this lies, Brandon? Do you think it's in the script, the acting, the story? I mean, my answer is kind of like a cop out answer. It's it's uh Yeah, I you don't achieve this greatness without so- the combination of all of them yeah. being good because um, you can have a, a great script with great lines and if the person, the actor isn't casted right, they can ruin it, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a, it's a combination of, of all of it. I mean, cinematography too, you know? Yeah. Um, it, Cause I think that, that it needed that feel. It needed to feel like a 40s or 50s film. It needed to have yeah. the look, uh, production design and cinematography wise, <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, but it was, it, 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 it's, it's a magical movie. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a reason that, um, this film won Best Picture. It's like, yeah, you can, you can have really great films come out, um, but if if they don't hit all those things, those magical beats, you know, it, it it's not special. Yeah. You know, and this movie is special because it's strong in all of those areas. Yeah, I agree. I think yeah. that's a great, <laughs> great put. Um, let's talk about that last scene because it's it's super famous. Um, it's you know Wilder was wonderful at writing last lines you know some like it hot um, nobody's perfect which I think is on his grave stone I think um, so that you know she runs back to the apartment after finally ending things with Sheldrake um, she hears a gunshot which again is brilliantly like <laughs> yeah because you see him pull to. the gun out too yeah. I didn't even notice it until the second time. And they, he, and he, he really tried to it. kill himself with a gun. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then she like rushes up the stairs. And it turns out it's just champagne because it's yeah. New Year's Eve. Um, and they sit down to play um, cards together. And he finally confesses his love to her. 
while still calling her Mrs. Miss Kubelik instead yeah. of Fran. Um, and the last line is her saying "shut up and deal," yeah, um, which is a little bit ambiguous, but I think you know it's just brilliant. It just says everything about their relationship is that she's been hurt. She doesn't necessarily want to maybe let herself feel the same way yet. Yeah. But she knows that they're onto something special. You know, it's just... And it's she's just also great... just taken the lead, you know? Yeah. It's like yeah. female it's... empowerment. She's like, I'm the boss now. Yeah. And that's what he needs. Yeah. Um, It's brill. I mean, I love the ending so much. Yeah, and The way man, that it it's... holds and they're both... Mm -hmm. You can tell they're just smiling a, at each other. Yeah, 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 it's great. Yeah, the apartment too. Where's that? What is <laughs> next? Talking to franchises. <laughs> the return of Sheldrake. <laughs> the ultimate <laughs> franchise. <Yeah. laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, so, man. did you enjoy the ending? What did you make of it? Yeah, that no, I liked it a lot. Describing it. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I agree with you, man. Like, it was, uh, it's very charming. It's very yeah. sweet. Um, it's hilarious. And also, yeah, it's just a great, it's a great happy ending to, yeah. to a, a fun movie and, and, you know, also dark movie. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, it's interesting because it's like, it's also not your typical rom com. Like, it's, it's, the, this couple, I mean, obviously he likes her, but, and I mean, and she maybe has a crush on him or something. It's not blatantly obvious, but, you know, they don't, it, it's not one of those like movies where the whole time you're like, yeah, they're supposed to end up together. Yeah. You know, but yeah, then, as soon as you find out about that, her and Sheldrake, you're kind of like, oh dear. Yeah. You know, but then at the end of it, it's like, it's weird that it doesn't happen till the end, you know what yeah. I mean? Till that, that moment. Yeah. Uh, well, weird, but also just perfect. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's a, not, not weird in a bad way. Yeah, he's let it go. You know, he's kind of confined to the fact that, um, like, he was going to tell Sheldrake that, you know, he wanted to be with her, I guess. Um, but then he was like, oh, I'm going to leave my wife. Like, she's, well, she's thrown me out. So yeah. I'm going to go with friends. <laughs> she now, fired me. Yeah, <laughs> um, and he just, you know, he just can't take it. So, um, and he quits and is ready to leave town, and start fresh, and it just all comes good for our buddy boy Baxter. So, yeah, yeah, it's a great ending. Yeah, man, I liked it. Good. It good. Yeah. Any other thoughts or comments about the apartment? Um. Just that, like, the like you were saying, the the script is really great. Um, I I love all the callback jokes throughout. Like it's 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 a really great film to watch if you're trying to work on like a a screenplay. You know, break down yeah. the structure and see how many times they call back some of these jokes. Because mm -hmm. there's like the joke where, um. She asks him how many drinks he's had, and he holds and he says three, but he holds up four <laughs> fingers. <laughs> and then there's another part where she's talking about her past relationships, and he's like, "How many guys?" And she says three, but she holds up four fingers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, just stuff like that. It's like, yeah. um, it it's great. And then uh, also something that really got me the second time watching was at the part the Christmas party. The swinging party on the nineteenth floor. There's so much PDA going on. I know. Yeah. <laughs> like it's just. I think it's like every housewife's worst nightmare from the sixties. <laughs> is like this is what the office world is like. Yeah, this is what my husband's <laughs> getting up to. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, um, I'm stuck yeah. at home. And I think it kind of you know it it again is just it's perfect script writing because even to get some alone time in his office. He has to kick a kissing couple out. Yeah, which is exactly like his apartment. Like he can't, mm -hmm. you know, find any space that he hasn't given to someone else to use for illicit activities. Yeah, yeah. you know, and it's those touches that just make it, you know, so good. It would have yeah. been so easy not to have had that, and just had them walking past kissing people and being like, "Oh, 
Yeah. But it's always reminding you that, you know, he has to fight for this yeah. alone time. So Yeah. Um speaking of that scene where he's kicking the couple out of his office, it, yeah. I also found it really brilliant the way that they bring both characters down at the same time mm-hmm. where she finds out that uh Yeah. What's his name? Uh, Sheldrick. Yeah, that Sheldrick is is playing her. You know, like yeah. he's done the same yeah. thing with all these girls, and it it like breaks her heart. And then the Baxter character finds out that she's the one that Sheldrick has been taking out. Like the scene right after that, and mm-hmm. so they both just they're on the same like arc, yeah, on the yeah. same path and stuff. And just a you know a wonderful line of you know well your mirror is cracked. It's like yeah, that's how I feel on the inside. Yeah. It's just, oh, you know, it's so good. Yeah, yeah. I'm just dealing with these issues that are humongous and not really that well explored in the 1960s, you know. Yeah. Um, But done with just a great touch. Yeah. This is the kind of film I feel like I could, like if I was having a small party, like a small yeah. couple's party, you know, and we had a few people over, and we were like, all right, let's watch a movie. And I'm notorious for being a film buff. And somebody is like, I hate older movies. They're so boring. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, yeah? We're going to put the apartment on. We're yeah. Show you how good old movies are. <laughs> I feel like for Wilder, there's so many films that can do that, though. Yeah. I feel like he's just one of those directors that just constantly was pushing this the boundaries of what he could show yeah yeah um, and they're still fresh i mean in in the 40s he made the last weekend which is a film all about alcohol alcoholism okay and addiction which is yeah. like you know still mind-blowing today he's yeah just he's one he's amazing so yeah go and watch everything <laughs> i will that's that's to every listener that's listening <laughs> billy wilder is the king Go and watch everything Billy Wilder film-wise. Yes. And he wrote a lot as well. He wrote Ninochka, which he didn't direct, and a few other stuff. Okay. So, yeah, he's pretty prolific. Sweet. Yeah. Well, I think that brings us to the end. We are closing the door on the apartment. But before we turn the key in the lock, Brandon, we're going to guess what the other people... What the other people... Guess what each other rated it on Letterboxd. Um, so Yeah. I uh on, uh clicked on the film. Like even though you didn't show what you rated, <laughs> rated it this, this time, time, I clicked yeah. on the film and saw what you rated it. So yeah. I know you rated it five out of five. I probably yeah. would have guessed that anyway, but Yeah. I'm gonna say the same for you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I it's, mean, how could I not you can't, dude? This yeah, is exactly. You can't a perfect not. film. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. It's yeah. that, uh, the listeners all know, it's that relief of, you know, showing someone you like a film that you love and them having the same reaction. It's just, yeah, it's great. The best. Bless. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what are we going to watch next week? It's so, a tough act to follow. Yeah. Is it what? It's a tough act to follow. Oh, yes, d- definitely. <laughs> and I have no idea how it's going to go because okay. I'm picking a film that I haven't seen and you haven't seen. It's a documentary. Uh, it is very on the nose to can, you know, to watch after we watched Bernie last week. Yeah. Uh, f- something I've been wanting to watch for a while and I haven't gotten around to it. <clears throat> a documentary from 1997 called Ooh. Hands on a Hard Body. Ooh, I don't think I've ever heard of this. Hands on a Hard Body. So, Hands on a Hard Body, like they reference it in Bernie. Yeah. It's a a, a thing that happened in my hometown of Longview, Texas, uh, where every year they would hold this competition called Hands on a Hard Body. Uh, basically, it was like a truck and a boat or a truck and a trailer or something like that. Yeah. And uh, people would show up and they would, the competition was everybody puts their hand on the truck and the last person 
to leave their hand on the truck wins the truck. Oh, wow. Okay. So people would be out there for days. Whoa. <laughs> no showers, you know. Yeah. Um, I feel and, like I, that seventies show, the the old sitcom. I, f- I feel like they had an episode like this. It f- it sounds familiar. Yeah. Well, it's it's crazy to me that this this documentary, like that, I had never heard of this documentary because, yeah. I mean, this was my hometown, and this this documentary was made when I was seven years old, um, and. I guess was a pretty big documentary because the way that I found out about it was um, watching an interview with Quentin Tarantino and somebody asked him what his like favorite documentary was and he said Hands on a Hard Body and I know what Hands on a Hard Body is because that was a competition in my hometown yeah. and I was like yeah. wait what <laughs> what <laughs> so I like looked it up and I was like holy shit this is a documentary about this competition in my hometown and. I've never heard of it, and Quentin Tarantino is talking about it. How great, um, yeah. So it's been on my list for a couple of years, and yeah, after watching Bernie again, I was like, all right, let's 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 do it for Film Church. Sweet. I love I that. I mean, it's it, it's hopefully good. I mean, Tarantino yeah. liked it, so. Yeah. It's all about, I mean, it's all about watching these things, right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's awesome. I can't wait to watch it. Yeah, That'll we- be... We don't Go have ahead. a ton of documentaries on our, our no. list. Like we did yeah. Flea, which we both loved. Yeah. But this will I think will be fun. It also yeah. might be very strange. I'm like, what if I'm in the background in one of these shots? <laughs> <laughs> I'm stoked. I I love things like this, especially when it's real I mean, documentary duh, but especially when it's like real people doing that kind yeah. of thing. Mm-hmm. And with it just being a, I assume it's a certain number of contestants. I I guess there's going to be some pretty interesting characters, so I'm I'm looking forward to to watching it. Yeah. Um. But as we said, that'll be next week. So if you want to watch along with us, hands on a hard body, watch it for next Sunday. Um. Looks like that brings us to the, end of the show. Um. You can find the show on Twitter and Instagram at Film Church Radio, and you can follow us individually on Letterboxd. Brandon is at Salmon Scope, and I am at Walker Lewis three zero zero seven. Um, keep up with what we've been watching. Um, we also have all our back episodes streaming on all good podca- podcast platforms every week. I fall over those words. Um, please leave us a rating and review so we know if you like the film, if you didn't, and what you would pick for us to watch in the future. Um, but yeah, I, you know, you see a girl a couple of times a week, Brandon, just for laughs, and right away, they think they're going to divorce your wife. Now I ask you, is that fair? No, sir. It's very unfair, especially for your wife. <laughs> just an example of the brilliant <laughs> dialogue in this film it's amazing <laughs> the best yeah well thanks everyone for listening hope you have a good week and we'll see you next time say your film church prayers amen amen <laughs> bye bye <laughs>